Hello all, I am Arjuna Buruzwali, Assistant Professor in Computer Engineering Department at AIS SMS IOIT, Pune. In this video, we'll discuss the CPM example. As in the previous video, we have discussed the CPM concept. What is the CPM exactly? Uh, what is the process to find out uh, the critical path? So now we we'll, here we'll take in this video we'll discuss the actual example of the CPM. So here is the example you can see here. Uh, the example is CPM example. So here the activities are there, A to G activities are there. And for each activities, immediate predecessors and expected time in weeks is mentioned here in this particular example. Now for this example, we have to find out the critical path using the CPM, critical path method. Okay, so when we are saying we have, we have to find a critical path for this particular example or for any example using the CPM, we have to go through or we have to do all those things which are enlisted here. The first we need to find or draw the project network diagram for the given example. Okay, once the network diagram is ready, we need to carry out the forward and backward pass for that particular network diagram. Then we need to find the project completion time based on the forward pass and backward pass. We can find out the project completion time. And then we need to find out or calculate the slack values or the float values. And once the slack values or float values are calculated after that, the last is to find out or to identify the critical path with the slack or float values as zero. Okay, so we need to go through all this. Uh, we need to do all the points there for the particular example and then only we can find out the critical path. Okay, we'll go to the example again. So this is the example here. Okay, so for this example, uh, we'll go, we are going to find out the critical path. Now, uh, when we have the first step is to construct the project network diagram. So for network diagram, we need to first understand a node structure. So this particular node structure we are going to use here in the network diagram. So you can see here, A means the activity description here. T means the activity, activity time or the duration for the particular activity. ES and EF, that is the values which can be calculated during the forward pass, that is early start and early finish. And the next values, that is the LS and LF, these are the latest start and latest finish. These values can be calculated during the backward pass. Okay, so the first step is to draw the network diagram. So based on this table or this particular example, the network diagram is drawn here. This is a simple network diagram, which we are, which we are, I have drawn over here. Okay, now we'll convert this network diagram using the same node structure which we have discussed in the previous slide. So with this node structure, we are able to continue. So here is the actual network diagram for the given example. You can see here the start node and finish node and each node is having the activity name and the duration of the activity. Now what we need to do, we need to carry out the forward pass and backward pass to find out the ES and EF values as well as LS and LF values. Okay. So with this network diagram, now we'll continue to find out the ES and EF values. So first step is what? Now to perform the forward pass on the created project network. So on that created project network diagram, now we'll uh, carry out the forward pass. Now in the we know how to carry out the forward pass or how to find out the values of ES and EF. So as in this example, the first activity is A. And the initial time is not mentioned here. So we'll assume the initial time to start with the project or start with the activity is zero. So here, the early start for the activity A is zero. And the early finish will be early start plus this duration that is zero plus seven. So early finish will be the seven. So in this way, we'll calculate the early start and early finish for all the nodes which are there in the project network data. And so at the end of this, we come to the finish node and we found here that the time required for the project, complete time required for the project is 32 weeks after carrying out the forward pass. Now in the next slide, we carry out the backward pass. So now perform the backward pass on the created project network. So calculate the values of LS, that is the latest start and latest finish based on the given example. So in the backward pass, we'll start with the last node. Okay, as we move from the uh, right to left. So we'll start from here. So here we'll start the 32 in the previous uh, in the previous slide that is in the forward path, we already found out that is the 32 is the total time required for the project. So we'll take this 32 as the latest finish 
for the last activity here F as well as for G. Okay, so it is copying now. We just uh, subtract the timeline or the duration for this particular activity that is the 32 minus 6 that is the 26 will be the latest start for this particular activity. And now in this way, we calculate the let start and let finish for each and every nodes in this or each or every nodes or activities in this network diagram. Okay. So it is calculated now. So now we have drawn the project network diagram. We have calculated the values of early start, early finish by carrying out the forward pass and late start, late finish by carrying out the backward pass. Now the next step is to calculate the slack. So here we have to calculate the slack. Now how to calculate the slack? For calculating the slack, there, there is a formula that slack is also called as a float. Okay, so the formula is what? Late start minus early start or late finish minus early finish. So as we know, this is the value of late early start and this is the value of late start. Same way here, this is the value of early finish, this is the value of late finish. So if we subtract these values, means early uh, late start minus early start, 2 minus 0 or 9 minus 7, we get the value as 2. So here, for this activity A, there is a slack of two. So the slack for this particular activity A is 2. Same way we calculate it for the activity C. So here you can also see that 26 minus 19 or 14 minus 7, the slack is what? 7. Same way for this activity here, 32 minus 32, 0, 26 minus 26 is 0. So, this is, so the slack is 0 here. Now, in this way, we calculate the slack time for all the nodes or all the activities in the network diagram. Okay. So here you can see in this network diagram, here we have calculated the slack for all the activities. Now, the next step is what? As we have already calculated the slack, now the next step is what to identify the critical path. So how to identify the critical path? It is very easy to identify the critical path. Just find out all the nodes or all the activities with the slack time equals to zero. If the slack is zero, then that particular activity is in the critical path. If the slack time or float time is zero, it means the particular activity is in the critical path. So you can see here, we'll start from the first node that is the start node. We'll go here. Here the slack is zero. Here also the slack is zero. For the activity E also the slack is zero. And for activity F is the slack is zero. And then we can go to the finish node. So you can see that we'll start from here, then go to the B, then D, then E, then F, and then finish. So this is the critical path. So it is shown over here in this diagram. The critical path is from start node to finish node. And in between the critical path is B, D, E, and F where the slack is equals to zero. The other activities that is a activity A, C, and G, they are not in the critical path because their slack is greater than zero. When the slack is greater than zero means what? That particular activity can be delayed by that many days. Means for example, here you can see that the slack is equals to one, activity G, the slack is equals to one and the timing is in the weeks. Five, five, here the duration is five, so it is in the weeks. So it means that when slack is equals to one, it means that here the particular activity G can be delayed by the one week. It will not affect the pro project completion time. Even if it is delayed by the one week, it will not affect the project completion time. So this particular activity G here is having the flexibility of the one week. Activity C here is having the flexibility of the seven weeks. And activity A can have the flexibility here of the two weeks because they are not in the critical path. And why they are not in the critical path? Because their slack time is greater than zero. So the critical path identified here is B, D, E, and F, and then finish. So in this way, we have calculated the critical path using the CPM method. Thank you.